What are the challenges in creating an NFV stroke MEC architecture for CSPs? We've got three CSPs here in front of them. You're working with this every day. What do you find the most challenging? What's the most difficult? And where are you with them? I mean, at, at, the, at, the, at the moment, the challenges are in, in, in serious deployment and getting it uh, up and running in scale type, type of issues. I, but that's sort of, this part is sort of rolling uh, along. It's sort of a normal thing going along, having some challenges here and there and there, but it's possible to fix. I think uh, uh, where the really the big challenges are to create more benefits out of the cloud native uh, uh, paradigm, <laughs> uh, to basically get the automation uh, uh, going more more heavily. I mean, we believe cloud native should give more benefits, cost benefits, operational expense benefits, uh, uh, on the, for for automation. The other topics are really sort of this more multi-stakeholder type of scenarios which we are probably used to from MPLS VPN times but but not from uh, 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 everywhere and not not for mobile at all yeah I think we are in a different world I think the architecture by itself uh, that's not too difficult because uh, we need to work in a different way we need to work in an iterative way yeah and in the past I mentioned this yesterday at the Intel network builders event uh, the industry was kind of suffering from a POC virus. So the idea was always, oh, you need, we need to build a proof of concept. I think it's, this is the wrong approach. We need to come up with an initial architecture, implement it, bring it into production, learn from there, and then go through the next iteration. And this is the way how you, you're dealing in this uh, uh, cloud compute software world mm -hmm. and not, uh, we need to think theoretically what are the use cases and some of these things are just developing while, while you're working on this. And uh, I think that's part of the cultural change we all need to go through to actually adopt that different way of working. And I bother the I th thing that is very important here is not about, it's not only about the supporting architecture. We need a software architecture that facilitates the creation of those applications of these on those multi um, multi provider environments we, and we need for that a software architecture that has to be new we cannot rely for example on current cloud models because current cloud models are oriented to a widespread enormous data center with a great capacity and you can migrate you cannot care less about that we're talking about something different and we're talking about different challenges and we're talking about uh, pr a programming model that makes application developers uh, uh, to have a, an easy environment for this, for writing the code, for debugging the code, for testing, and for deploying. And this is something that, uh, well, thinking the, uh, the, uh, the other day, discussing with some colleagues about uh, Mac and, and, and all the like, uh, something that came to my mind is that now that we are living this uh, uh, second or third incarnation of the uh, AI, probably is the moment to, to, to start with the second incarnation of something that uh, has been forgotten as well, that is the agent system. Because we're talking agents here. Pieces of codes that, will, that are from third parties and that will be mobile on, a, on infrastructure that can be hostile to them. At the same time, they can be hostile to the infrastructure and be used by used, sent, and, and required by, by, by the users. Um, look at it, and probably we should get some inspiration in the previous agent models to see whether we can we can come with a with a, um, with, a with a software model that is usable for the uh, for the uh, application developers. Thank you, Vine. What do you say coming from Hewlett Packard Enterprise? What do you say to that? So I think, uh, as uh, you know, uh, Alex and Diego said about the challenges, I think part of the challenges that we are seeing in the industry is stemming from the fact that most ISVs uh, and most NEPs basically didn't build you know, cloud native to start with or didn't build with virtualization in mind. So a lot of this work was taking what they had on appliances and moving it towards virtualized environments. So, you know, as we look at the orchestration challenges, a lot of it stems from the fact that you know all they've done is converted what was there before into the virtualized form. 
Uh, you know, so we struggle with basic things like, okay, I've launched an instance, but I, I don't know how to apply a license. You know, and it's seriously, I mean, you know, a lot of these things are, are challenges that people in orchestration realm face day in, day out. Uh, so how do we get out of this mode and as truly get into the cloud native where all of these things are accessible as services? In other words, I can go and retrieve a license, you know, uh, and, and do a number of the things that today we struggle with. Uh, you know, it's not just licensing, configuration. I mean, there are 100 XML files, configuration files that need to be edited before a function becomes live. And somebody has to either manually or script these things. And if one thing fails, you know, uh, so a lot of these challenges, I think, as we get to the cloud native realm, will become simpler because you will have smaller functions, configurations can be pushed out from discovery services and so forth. So uh, I think it, as we go through the journey, uh, the cloud native uh, technology will definitely help us. Um, and in the short term, I mean, there are solutions that that both HP and Intel have been you know, bringing to the marketplace, whether it's orchestration or doing the matchmaking for hardware and uh, VNFs. Uh, so a lot of this technology is there. It's just organizationally also bringing in the carriers, uh, you know, ops people up to speed on making sure they understand how to operate these things because they've historically operated, you know, the, the classical network appliances. Uh, so it's, I think it's, it's a journey that everybody is taking. I think different parts of organizations are in different places. I think the office of the CTOs and the product management teams are farther ahead than the ops team in my opinion. And I think that's what we are seeing. Caroline, you have anything to add to that? Let's just do it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to say you're being cloud native, you better be moving at the speed of the cloud guys. Um, they just, they go do it, just so do it. In fact, I'll put, pull a plug in. So, uh, Esso and I are both on the tip board. We're setting up Mac. We're setting up AI machine learning group. It really is to invite people to come in across the spectrum from Facebook, from people like Intel, from people like you guys, uh, an audience, come in and experiment and try it out. That's really, I'm just like sick of all the talking and do just let's go ahead and do it. That's what, that's what TIP is for, right? We set up Absolutely. the lab for that, yeah. So, by the way, he's the chairman of the board, so I work for him in <laughs> TIP. <laughs> Well, we're out of time, and I think people will agree that was a super, super panel. I'd just like to say thank you very much indeed, all of you, for a contribution, particularly to Diego, who said before we came on stage, I won't be saying much, my throat hurts. He said what? It's better now, isn't it? Yeah, you know. The, <laughs> so, a good conversation, good people around. Yeah, helps yes, exactly. <laughs> really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here as well. And please show your appreciation for a great panel.